our mission is to see lives awakened and families strengthened within a missional community by creating opportunities for Jesus Christ to reveal and manifest himself. An awakening of peace with God, power from God, and purpose for God. This is Salvation City Church. I'd like to pray once more before we get into the Word. Uh, There is a special message this morning that I do want to share, and uh, vision and direction that is for the body. And uh, those that are watching or listening online later on, I'm going to have some slides to share. Uh, The slides won't be available online, but those of us here will be able to see those. But let's pray as we uh, get into what God wants to say this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence in this place. I recognize, Lord, that you are resting upon every heart today. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me and that you would unite our hearts in the mission and the vision that you've called this body to accomplish. Lord, thank you for every single person in this room and listening. I'm grateful for them, Lord God, that you've brought us together for a purpose. And Lord, as we fulfill your purpose and build your kingdom, You provide everything else that we need, Lord. We thank you for that, God. Speak this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, every once in a while, we do what's called a state of the church address. And um, there were some some changes coming that made it appropriate this morning to do so. But there's also a word that I want to share. Um, We're going to try to get those slides up and running here. Sometimes they act kind of funny. So we'll see if this works. We might have to just use this one. Um, State of the Church Address. A couple of months ago, I sent out a survey to uh, those who consider SCC their family and uh, asking some questions concerning uh, the health of the church and the direction that the church is going. And uh, I did want to just review a couple of the highlights from that survey as we seek to make some important decisions as a church family. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and just use this slide, I think. And can you, can you hit the next slide for me and make sure that's working? We, we don't use these screens very often anymore, so every once in a while we get to work out the bugs. But, um, so a few months ago, I sent out a survey asking some different questions, and I wanted to just share a quick highlight of some overall positives and other areas of, uh, that we want to work on as a church community and develop and grow in. Uh, so from the voices here, Here are a couple of observations I just want to share. Um, On the positive end, uh, we saw a lot of uh, excitement around the house fires and other church community building events, which is good to see. Uh, We saw a lot of positive reaction to the ministries, specifically that serve the region, opportunities to give back and serve the area. Uh, Also, we saw a lot of positive excitement around the the deliverance ministry that was launched last year and uh, that ministry that was been uh, that's been uh, that we've partnered with many people in for deliverance and then lastly a lot of positive words on the worship and the teaching ministry but some things to develop and improve and of course the uh, improvements were the areas that I really wanted to focus on but we're not going to take a lot of time on this we're just going to skim over it Uh, first we heard that For many, they felt that there were not enough opportunities for you to learn and grow in your gifts. We hear you, and we are prayerfully seeking ways for the Lord to build opportunities to do that. Uh, Second, some (laughs) responses about the setup and teardown as a church. Of course, that's to be expected in this particular environment, but nonetheless, we heard you. Uh, Thirdly, some folks felt kind of overwhelmed at the number and the complexity of all the different events and things happening at the same time within the church. So some folks shared that. And then lastly, um, we heard that some, some people believe that we're not quite as welcoming as a body to new people as we could be. And we want to learn and grow and develop that as well. So as I minister this morning and teach, I'm going to touch on some of these here and there. But I wanted to just 
wanted you to see that as an overview and to know that we're listening and that we want to uh, make developments and, and changes in order to uh, build a ministry that is really for us, right? It's for his glory, but it's, it's, it's crafted for us to engage in, right? Uh, so with that being said, let's go to the next slide for me, if you don't mind. Um, so I want to talk about the needs of our city. The needs of our city. Uh, this morning is a, is a morning focused on the vision, the vision, the mission of the church. And I showed this a few months ago, and I want to bring it back to our attention so we can see the needs that our city, Tampa, has. And so we're going to go to that next slide here. This may look familiar, uh, and we might have to zoom in a little bit, but we can kind of leave that for now. Some of the text is kind of small, but I want to read you some of these stats that reflect the need, the condition, the brokenness in our city and in our region. We see that 55,000 plus unemployed. One out of 10 people have food insecurity, not enough to eat. Over 27,000 overdose calls in 2022 alone. We see almost 500 suicides, not attempted, but 500 suicides in 2021. Over 6,000 children experiencing abuse between 5 and 11. Severe housing problems, poverty problems, 4,690 children in foster care. These are real numbers that reflect a real need in our region, in our community. I will share that this morning I might be touching on some things that are a little heavy for little ears, but I will try to Put it in parent speak, you know what I mean? Like spell stuff, you know, you know what I mean? Parent speak, you say things in certain ways. We're like, yeah, yeah, and the kids don't get it. We'll see. But these are real needs in our area, right? And we believe that as a ministry in this urban Seminole Heights, Tampa region, we are called to meet many of these needs as the church, to feed, to house, to help as best as the Lord would allow us. I want to take these numbers and kind of drill it down into some stories, though, for us. Because these, these can seem big and overwhelming and, and impersonal. But let me tell you a couple of stories. And some of these stories I'm going to share are personal information, and I'll do my best to protect sensitive details. But I think the Lord placed these on my heart so that we recognize the real need that we have in our region. A couple of weekends ago, Brittany had the opportunity to meet a homeless couple. And uh, the woman was, was pregnant with her fourth or fifth child. And they were homeless here without a car, without anything. They were escaping a lot of trauma that they had back home. We brought them into service. And afterwards, Brittany and I, we took them out to lunch to uh, just show them love and to hear more of their story. And as we're talking, I could tell that the young man was really wrestling with something spiritual. I could tell in his clenched jaw, in his dazed look, in his, uh, uh, the fact that he was unemotional, uninvol uninvolved with the conversation. And so I told him, I said, hey, let me, uh, let me pray for you. And I took him outside and I laid hands on him and prayed. And I sensed that there were some spiritual demonic activity in his life and as we prayed and I began to take authority over those things he began to weep began to break down and and confess what was really going on and the things he was running from we take him back inside and later on we, you know we we part ways we go home and I get a text or Brittany gets a text from the girl saying that for the first time when they got back he beat her and she was on a plane that night to fly home and escape him. And we haven't heard from him since. That's real. That's happening. Even with all the facades, even with all of the looks, these things are happening. About a month ago, we had the honor of coming alongside a family and getting to know their needs and to love them. And one of the daughters who was just a teenager, had a history of self-harm. But she was back home with her family. And uh, we had a chance to get to know her, to hear her story, a, a very troubling story. 
And as we came alongside her, we prayed with her and ministered to her and desired to see her flourish and grow until I get a phone call last week that she overdosed again. It was unconscious for multiple days in the hospital. And I went and visited her in the hospital bed. And she's back in the system. She's taken away from family again. These are real needs, real problems. We can look at our own situations and think how hard we have in our life when the person next to you is broken. The person next to you wants to go home and scream and break and rage. The person next to you wants to just escape life and end it all. Maybe not the person next to you, but the person down the street here in this community. It's stories like these that in history, in times past, are oftentimes catalysts for revival because it wakes the church up to the needs of people to bring them into prayer like never before. Have you ever noticed that when times are the hardest, you pray the hardest? Right? And so we're praying and we're asking the Lord, what would you have us do? There's been a renewed sense of purpose in me, a renewed sense of vision over the last few weeks that I want to talk about. Uh, You know, Don and I, we have conversations about the church and the direction of the church. And we talk about all the people that have come and gone over the years, over the last three and a half years. And the, uh, the summary is this, that, that people come broken and they leave whole. <laughs> they leave, but they leave whole. People traveling and moving on with different endeavors, but people have come broken into this house and left whole. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You know, a few weeks ago, or no, sorry, just this last week, I was meeting with a, a great man of God. His name is Chuck Ammons. Some of you might remember that he and his family came a few weeks ago to visit and to spend some time with us. Uh, He is a spiritual father to me. And uh, I met with him and I shared some of these stories. And he said, Joel, I'm going to pray for you right now. I believe the Lord has a word that he wants me to share with you. And as I sat down and he came to pray for me, he said, the Lord is calling you to reach the broken. To reach the broken. That's exactly what Don said. People come broken, they leave whole. To reach the broken. The broken. And in the middle of all this, in my seeking of the Lord, God brought me back to a passage that we have kind of been in and out of over the last three years. But the Lord began to highlight this passage as a mandate from heaven, a clarion call to give us clear vision on what the Lord wants to do. Here, and it's in Isaiah 61. Can we go to Isaiah 61 together? Would you turn there with me? As I was reading this passage recently, the Lord began to show me that everything that we have been building as a ministry has in some way, shape, or form been summarized in Isaiah 61, and I never even realized it. I'm reading through it. I'm saying, saying, Lord, that's what you told us to do. That's what you told us to do. He said, yeah. The Lord said, Isaiah 61 is the clarion call of this body in this region. And I want to read. I want to read the whole chapter today and highlight a few portions. Isaiah 61. If you have the new King James... It has a subtitle, and the subtitle says this, The Good News of Salvation. Now, many different translations have different subtitles. Some of them talk about the anointing. Some talk about the Messiah. But in my Bible, it said, The Good News of Salvation. I said, Lord, that's, that's us. <laughs> Salvation City. Salvation City. Starting in verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the broken, the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. A few weeks from now, we're going to go into a series called The Good News. And we're going to break down each of these passages. Today, I'm going to skim just for a few moments. But I want you to know, as we read those first three verses, when our body talks about lives being awakened, lives awakening, that's part of our mission, that, you can go to the next slide, by the way, just take that off. Lives awakened. This is the description of lives awakened. <laughs> Where we see the broken healed, the captive free, the bound delivered, the mournful comforted, ashes to beauty, sorrow to joy, heaviness to praise, death to life. When we think about Salvation City Church and part of our mission to see lives awakened, this is the description. When you say, what does that mean, awakened? Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. This is what we're after. And I read that, and my spirit just came alive. And the Lord said, this is what awakening is. I want to continue reading into verse 4. <coughs> they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Part of our mission as a church is to become a missional community. And the Lord said, as Salvation City Church, when we talk about a missional community, verse 4 is what we're after. You see, verses 1 through 3 are a description of the anointing upon someone. But verses 4 is the reason for the anointing on us to rebuild the old ruins, the spiritual ruins, the ruins of families, the governmental ruins. <laughs> Raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities. That word repair, the Greek is kadash, and it actually means revive. Bring back to life. To seek out the dead things and to bring them back to life. That is our call at Salvation City Church. As a missional community. To see this region rebuilt, revived, restored to the glory of God. Amen? To the glory of God. That's who we are. This is what we're after. The desolation of many generations. It says, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named, but you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. The riches of the Gentiles is the wealth of the nations. <laughs> this isn't part of our mission statement, but this is part of our identity as priests. We are priests unto the Lord. I want to keep reading. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Can you say amen? amen? Instead of shame, double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth and will make them with them an everlasting covenant. Stepping into verse 9 is where we're going to see families strengthened. When we talk about families strengthened, verse 9 is the description of what we're after. It says, there, that's us, that's the redeemed, their descendants, their children, shall be known among the Gentiles. The Greek word there is goi. It means the nations, the world, the people, those outside of presence of God, the world. 
It says, their descendants, their descendants shall be known in the world among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All who see them, see who? The children, the generations. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the pos posterity whom the Lord has blessed. Our mission as a church is to see our children blessed. That our ceiling would be their floor and that the nations of the world would see our families and recognize the hand of God. Amen? That there's such a blessing, such glory on the family unit. The world will see that. Just to read verses 10 and 11. <coughs> It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Hallelujah. The garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe, the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. This describes the blessedness of God's people. That praise would spring forth. These passages, they, they touch on priestly identity, bridal identity. They touch on justice, of course, family these passages in Isaiah 61 lay out the blueprint of where we are going as a church. Truly what we've already done, but with more clarity, with more direction, with more vision, where we are going. So a big question I'm going to ask today is how can we be better positioned to serve our city and obey the Isaiah 61 mandate? How? How? What is the Lord calling us to adjust, to change, in order to see the cities rebuilt, the generations walking in the blessedness of godly living, and the awakening that comes from the anointing of the Lord? There's a couple of things that I think about with how things are being operated right now. You know, discipleship is a big part of the ministry that's part of the awakening process. But having, con having consistent discipleship opportunities in this space right now is kind of complicated. <laughs> we don't own the building, but beyond that, there's always people in and out. The, the, to even get a room here is complicated. And so you might have sensed that, you know, sometimes in different days we meet in this room, in that room, in this place, in that place, because it is quite complicated to have a consistent place to meet here and it impacts our ability to disciple well i think about how families are a high priority for us that a third about of the church is eight and under and i thank god for that <laughs> most people i talk to they say like wow that's that's amazing you don't really see that very often many of the churches in this region are old <laughs> we'll just say it that way there's no life but yet to get our kids into their classrooms, there's a hike across a parking lot. <laughs> it's in a separate building, right? And that impacts the ability for us to manage a healthy and protected and, and uh, successful kids ministry. It really does. I know it's one little aspect of it, but I see it. I recognize that. I think about serving our region, but let's be honest, in this community, this immediate community in Wellswood that we're in, um, it, has po it has become very difficult to reach the people here. And I have my own opinion on that, and there could be a variety of different, way different reasons for that. Um, I believe a big, a big part of that is uh, uh, wealth can oftentimes uh, cause people to not feel like they don't need God. And this is one of the, this little section right here, Wellswood, is one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the region. Uh, mostly because of just the, the properties that are so old but have risen up so high in value. But we haven't seen a response in this area to the ministry that God has called us to do. 
So what do we do with this? What do we do with these tensions? The Isaiah 61 mandate, the limitations that we sometimes feel. And here's what we're going to do. And many of this from know that the church is moving. <laughs> we are changing locations. We're changing locations and it is a good thing. <laughs> a really good thing. And I want to talk this morning about the change that is to come over the next month as we step into the Isaiah 61 mandate. Amen. And as we begin to see God move mightily in this body in the region that he's called us to. So we're moving. And for some, that's big news. For some, that's kind of like, okay, what's going to happen? I'm going to take the next few moments to talk us through the next season as a church, where we are going and what we are doing because we are moving. Uh, what's the next slide here for me, if you don't mind? We are moving to a location called the Gwyn Center that is three miles around the corner from us. We're not going far. We're staying in the region. We're staying in Seminole Heights. But we are going just about a mile and a half east on Hillsboro and then north on Nebraska. This is uh, on the corner of Nebraska and Sly, a very, very busy intersection with a lot of traffic, <laughs> which is good for us. We're moving to the Gwyn Center. Uh, and I'm going to walk, you can hold that picture for, for a few moments. I'm going to walk you through the building, but I want to lay out some logistics here as a church family for a few moments, okay? Our first Sunday at the Gwyn Center is October, the first Sunday in October, which is October, was it 6th, I think? I get, yeah, thank you. October 6th. So we are not here for very much longer. <laughs> We're shifting into the Gwyn Center on October the 6th. A few more logistics here. It's uh, another big change that we'll be implementing. It's a change in the start time of the service. And we wrestled with this quite a bit with many of the families here. We've had a lot of conversations and a lot of prayer. But we have landed on an 11 a.m. start time, which means we get to sleep in. Hallelujah. <laughs> or have more time with our families in the morning. We're doing an 11 a.m. start time, 11 to 12.30. So we're doing a later start time, which will open up the door for many people who are unchurched. Because most folks that are unchurched don't want to get up at 8.30 in the morning to get to church. It's hard for them. I've had many conversations with them. So we're doing an 11 to 12.30 service. Another great thing is that set up at this new location, we're hoping and believing to do it in 15 minutes, praise God. <laughs> it is not like this space where we have to move furniture and move all this stuff and get all this stuff set up and, you know, flags and signs to, to direct traffic into this building instead of the other building. We're not having to worry about any of that. We're hoping for a short and simplified setup. Can I get an amen from the setup team? Amen. And tear down, right? So a lot of good things. I don't want to take you through the building now, take you on a quick tour of the building. Uh, first, you see the, there's the entrance there. Uh, the parking lot fits more cars than here. We are not having to wrestle with other services happening at the same time, which is a blessing. Um, that's the entryway. Why don't we take a step inside? So these are three pictures kind of put together. When you walk inside, this is like a, the foyer, the foyer. It's a very wide kind of uh, room with, uh, you can go either left or right. The main meeting hall is going to be to the right. So why don't you go to the next picture? This is that same room, but from a side view. You see the chandeliers, the pillars. It's a, it's a beautiful interior building. Um, a lot of nice furniture there, too. Go to the next slide. So when you go down the right, here's a couple of hallways. You see two entrances into the main hall. Uh, on the right is a small little meeting space that we'll have access to from time to time. But then as you go to the left, go to the next picture. This is the room. It looks small in the picture, but it's about the same size as this room. Uh, high ceilings. Uh, there's going to be other lighting fixtures in there as well. But it's an empty room. <laughs> Praise God. Something we've been needing for a while. Instead of a room just stuffed to the gills with stuff <laughs> as of right now. But it's an empty, an empty slate, an empty canvas for us to set up. Um, you see a door to the far left. We will not use that door. The door to the far right is the exit. But there's another door closer to you that you can't see. And when you go take a left down that door, go to the next picture. That's the hallway. The hallway has the bathrooms on the left. 
And when you go straight down the hallway and to the right, take another sl next slide, this is the, uh, 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 the room for the children, the children's room. A hop, skip, and a jump from the main room. Amen? <laughs> I love that. So this is the, uh, the kids' space. There's some chairs and benches and things like this in that room. A good-sized room, bigger than what we currently have. And then if you go the other way, instead of going right, you go left. Down that hall is another meeting room. And this room uh, will be available to us if we need a second classroom as well. And for other purposes, it's another little meeting room. Um, and I think that's it for the slides. What we're going to do with the next slide, Lance, hit it for me. There we go. What we're going to do is, uh, I wish I did a video. I didn't get a chance to do a video. But next week, after our Sunday morning service, we will have access from 12 to 1 p.m. to go to the building and to visit, take a walk, and to pray over the space together as a church family. So that's going to be next weekend, next Sunday, from 12 to 1 after we close, so you can get some eyeballs on the property. Um, so with the change in location, in general, the Lord is taking us through a process of simplification, of simplifying things. You know, already on the, during the worship, if you've been with us for a while, you remember that we simplified the worship experience. We unplugged, we put the lyrics in the bulletins, we just simplified things, made it less complicated. And then with the new space, it's going to be simplified again. Less set up, less tear down, less work in that regard. And I want to continue down this path of simplification and cast some vision of the church. That's the same that we've, we've always had, but it is a simplified vision. We are relaunching our mission statement. Our mission statement used to be kind of long, had a lot of ideas. It was uh, to, see our, uh, to, uh, to see lives awakened, families strengthened, and a missional community by creating opportunities for Jesus Christ to be revealed and manifested. We've taken all those ideas and just laid it out with Two short phrases, six simple words. And I want to hit that next slide with whoever's back there, but nobody's back there. That's okay. Usually I can cast it from the iPad, but it's not working today. So thank you, Lance. Hit that next one for me, bud. That's the old mission statement. Go to the next slide here. This is who we are. This is it. These three things are what we're after. Simple, easy, six words, three statements, all from Isaiah 61. Lives awakened, it's the same thing. Family strengthened and a missional community. That's why we exist. That's why the Lord brought us to this region at this hour. Let me just take you through each of those just for a quick moment so we can kind of build some, some put some meat on the bones of those three small statements. Hit that next slide for me, Lance. Oh, that got a little wonky, didn't it? That's okay. Sorry about that. That's weird. Lives awakened. I apologize for that. The first sentence, I'll read it for you. Uh, we experience awakening when, be when we believe the good news of Jesus. Sorry, that's been kind of messed up. I don't know what, Reed, did you do that? Was that you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we experience awakening when we believe the good news of Jesus. That's Isaiah 61. This is the good news. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. It's the good news. Second, we experience awakening when we love Jesus. That's the first of the greatest commands. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, your strength. And thirdly, we experience awakening when we are discipled by Jesus. As we walk through the journey of becoming like Jesus. That's discipling. And we look at Isaiah 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, liberty to the captives, and opening of the prison to those who are bound. This is our awakening. This is the awakening God is calling us to, to facilitate, to bring forth, to press in for, to believe in for. Next slide for me. They're all going to be messed up, but that's all right. Families strengthened. That first sentence says strong families equals a strong church. We've said that before. We're going to continue to use that in our language. Strong families equal a strong church. Second, the church is the family of God. The church is the family of God. What does that mean? Some folks will, are here and will come in that don't have family. Don't have family that they can lean on. Family that they can trust. But the church can step in and be that family for others. Amen? Amen. 
We can be the family for others. Spiritual mothers, spiritual fathers, spiritual brothers and sisters to come alongside those who don't have family. But for those who do have family, husbands, wives, sons, and daughters, we want to see, we want to build for the blessing of the generations after us. We build for the blessing of the generations after us. And that's Isaiah 61, 9. Their descendants will be recognized and honored among the nations. Everyone will realize that they are a people that the Lord has blessed. That's our desire to see family strengthened. Go to that third one for me. It's also going to be messed up. That's all right. Our missional community. We live to love God and others through serving. We're re-emphasizing servanthood as a local church, that we exist to serve the community, to come alongside others who have needs and meet them. We are on mission to see God's kingdom come for God's glory alone. By the way, this phrase, for, the, for His glory, that has been a rallying cry over the last three months, is in the last phrase of verse 3 in Isaiah 61. It says, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. We want to serve our city for God's glory. Amen? To see God's kingdom expanded for His glory alone. And then thirdly, we seek to grow, to go, not to gain. To go and not to gain. That is the great commission to go into all the world, to preach the gospel. Isaiah 61 verse 4. They, that is us, our calling will rebuild the ancient, ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. That's what we're called to. So along with the mission statement, I'm going to just lay out today how we're taking these purposes and adjusting the ministries that we have as a church. And then I want to close in prayer. I know this was kind of a, a meeting to facilitate some things, but I believe it's important so we can move forward. I want to talk about the house fire ministry. We're going to reshape this, reform this. Let me just announce it, and you're going to hear this over the next few weeks. As of right now, we meet in homes Wednesday and Thursday. But I've come to realize that the, the ones that it's hardest to do that are the ones who have children. <laughs> it's the families with young children. And it seems counterproductive to build a ministry that families cannot engage in, and yet our church is focused on serving families. Okay? So we're making some big changes on this. And this is the vision. This is what we're going to be doing starting in October. Instead of having organized weekly meetings at home, on Sundays, the whole church body will receive the printed and emailed house fire devotionals that have been reformatted to fit a family setting. We're going to make some adjustments. Don and I work uh, many hours on, on writing those for the body. But we're going to change some of it to make it accessible to the family. And we're going to encourage and equip family and household leaders to lead their own families in devotionals at home at least once a week with what we provide so that means the fathers here myself Aaron Nathan champion Kyler those with children we want to equip them to lead their household to seek the Lord in their homes you do it whenever you want in the morning in the evening on Thursday on Monday it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> you do it at home but on top of that for those who don't have households like that we will be meeting at the Gwynn Center, 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights to go through the same notes for those who, who, you know, families can still join us or those who don't have families can still join us. But we will still have just one in-person meeting at the Gwynn Center, 7 p.m. We are not doing dinner anymore. There might be some desserts. There might be something, just water, you know, that's something simple. But we're going to meet there at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. But all throughout the week, household leaders are doing the devotionals with their families. Does that make sense? Does that, does that, does that help kind of clear things up a little bit, simplify things a little bit? Right? We're talking about simplifying. 
Amen? Let's talk about the prayer ministry. We've been doing virtual prayer over the last month. That was just for a short season. We're no longer doing virtual prayer. That stops this week. Uh, we used to do pre-service prayer. Well, we're currently doing pre-service prayer. We will not have pre-service prayer when we go to the Gwynn Center because we won't have the long hours like we do now before the service starts. So how are we going to revamp the prayer ministry? What we're going to do is on Wednesday nights, after the 7 p.m. Bible study, we're going to have late night in-person prayer at the Gwynn Center after Bible study. That is optional to stay. You can just come to prayer. You don't have to come to the whole thing. But from, it's going to be from 9 to 9.30, basically. 9 to 9.30 on Wednesday nights in person at the Gwynn Center directly after that house fire session. So we're still going to have prayer every week. And we're still going to do encounter night every week as well. We're still going to have, instead of on those Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., instead of going through the notes, we're just going to have a night of prayer once a month, focused entirely on prayer. So once again, prayer is always on Wednesday night, period. Nothing virtual, nothing outside of that. Prayer is on Wednesday nights at the same location, okay? Simplify. <laughs> one place, one time, one thing, okay? We're simplifying this. Lastly, the commission evangelism. We've been trying to do Saturday mornings on the third Saturday of the month. That's been difficult for many. Um, we are working on ways to simplify that ministry as well. Uh, we have found that there's far more engagement when we have organized outreaches that have a specific direction. Okay, So we're working on building every month an organized opportunity to serve the community and meet people and love on people in a relational way. Okay, So we're, gonna, we're working on that and we want to do it that way. So in many ways, this is a relaunch of the church, okay? This is a relaunch. Like this is a reset button, a relaunch. New location, new time, new ministries adjusted. There's a lot of change. You know, they say the bigger things are, the harder it is to change. Well, we're small enough, we can do 20 changes at once right now. But what we're changing is for the long term. This is where we're going as a church body. So I want to talk about the relaunch for a few moments. I'm going to pass something out here. This is for everybody to just have a copy, and I'll make it on. Uh, I'll send it out online as well. Here, I'll, I'll take half and put it over here. This is just a schedule of the next month, so that you guys have something physical to have to p possibly put on your refrigerator, or on your desk, just for a couple of weeks. Um, something, uh, something important for everybody to know. You can go to the next slide. Just put it up there as well. So this is our relaunch. Calendar, some important relaunch dates that I want us to all just be aware of. So for a short time, nothing's going to change. And then in a very quick season, everything's going to change. <laughs> so here's what we're looking at. This Wednesday, we still have Encounter Night here at Cress. 7 o'clock, those that, that have been coming, it's the same thing. This Saturday, we are still going to the Angels, uh, Angels Senior Living to uh, minister to the elderly. We're going to play some music, sing some songs, possibly do a craft, and mostly just meet the lonely that are there and hear their story. We're still doing that. There's the address. It's on your flyer. 10, 10 o'clock off of Florida Avenue. We're still doing that. The next day, Sunday the 22nd, that is when we are doing the tour. We still have our normal service at 9.30. Um, next week is going to be a special morning. Michelle Pointer, who is sick today, uh, she's going to sit with me, and we're going to finish out our series on um, biblical over political, and we're going to talk about the unborn and uh, the rights for the unborn. She has a great passion for that. That's going to be next Sunday. And next Sunday, after service, we're going to go visit the Gwynn Center if you'd like, but that will be our last Sunday here. Next week is our last Sunday here. The following Sunday, we are not having service at all. Okay? Which might seem like a shock. I don't think we've done that once in three and a half years. We're, not, we're having no service. Why? A couple of reasons. One, we need some time to transition everything over to the Gwynn Center. Okay? Um, all of our stuff is here. Our flags, our supplies. There's a lot of 
moving parts there. And to do it during the week between services is going to be quite difficult. Uh, on top of that, many people, including myself, will be out of town. We just won't be here. I'll be in Mexico. <laughs> so not that that's a reason to cancel service because we have other people that are fit to lead. Uh, but everything kind of just pointed to a direction of let's have one week to just reset. One week. If you want to spend that morning in prayer, if you want to spend that morning reading the Word, if you want to spend that morning visiting another church, that's fine. We love that. Uh, just ask the Lord what He would have you do that day, but know that we are not meeting here. And then the following Sunday, the 6th, is our first service at the Gwynn Center in less than a month. Come on. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. It's going to be amazing. A better space. More, more, uh, uh, more centralized to the community. A better time for many later in the day. 11 o'clock. We're meeting at the Gwynn Center that Sunday. And if you're a part of Setup, Teardown, Worship, Usher, all that stuff, I will talk with you directly and how that's going to pan out. But just know that's the, that's the date we're starting. And then the following Wednesday is our first, well, that, that week is our first change of house fires. That Sunday, everyone will get the printed devotionals and email devotionals. That week, family mem families will be doing those devotionals at home. And we will be meeting consistently at 7 p.m. at the Gwynn Center for Bible study and prayer. Bible study is from 7 to 8.30. And as people are dismissed, prayer will be about from 8.30 to 9.30, probably more like 9 to, 8, 9 to 9.30. Um, but that's it. It's called, we're calling it afterburn, by the way. <laughs> afterburn prayer, after the Bible study. So, I want to leave a few moments for questions, if we have any questions. Uh, this is a lot of change, very quickly, but I believe that the Lord is speaking on this, He's breathing on this, and I am very, very excited, and I'm just bringing you guys into my excitement for what God is going to do. Guys, listen, the Gwynn Center is an improvement across the board. We're getting it at the same price as what we currently have this location for. There's better parking, it's better location, it's just awesome and i'm excited <laughs> can you guys get excited with me for a second can we get excited about it amen god is good god is good okay i want to open it up for questions and answers at this moment uh we're gonna sh this is gonna be like a family meeting here do i have any questions about all the changes that are taking place here questions so musical setup the room uh it's it's interesting we spent the last three months simplifying the worship team um, and moving into this new space. It's a good thing because they have nothing in there. There's no speakers. There's no screens. It's just an empty room. So for a time, the worship experience would be the same. But over the course of time, the owner who acquired the building only a few months ago, so this is a new endeavor for him as well, um, is looking to revamp the space. The hall that we're meeting in is very loud. You saw like the, the high ceilings. It's a very loud room. They're gonna look to treat the room sonically, put some uh, uh, sound absorption panels up and install uh, sound, things like that over the course of time. But as of right now, it fits with what we're doing, but we have the flexibility to expand that. Does that make sense? Okay. What about storage? There is storage at the property and it should be, yeah. Plenty of storage for all, all the stuff that we have. Yep, plenty of storage. And some of the things we have, we don't need anymore. So we're just going to put it in long-term storage just because of changing the, the setup process. What else? Questions? Kids, you guys have been awesome. Woo, thumbs up. Way to go, guys. Thank you. Kids have been awesome. Any other questions? So when we have, like, the Wednesday night, it will be in the main room or will it be in a side room? Would Wednesday night will be in a side room. Okay. Yep, not in the main room. Mm-hmm. As far as which of those rooms, we're not sure yet. It depends on how many people show up. There's a small room that can fit up to eight. But if we go past that, we'll have to use one of the bigger rooms. It just depends. What about the children's room? Can we leave the toys in the room? No, we can't leave anything in those rooms. Okay. Yeah, we will have to set up and tear down the kids' space. But we're just going to have things in bins ready to go quickly. And the, the, the storage will be right next to the room. It won't, right? it won't be very far. Yeah. Andrew and I had a chance to walk the property last week and pray over it and seek the Lord on it. So, Any other questions? Give you guys a minute. So the, so the rules are going to be changed every time you turn around. There's going to be something.
Possibly, possibly, I'll be honest. So what Sid is saying is uh, when we entered into this space, because it was also very new, every week something changed. All of a sudden there was furniture, all of a sudden there were signs, all of a sudden, and uh, it's possible. I don't anticipate it because their use of the building is different than this location. This location has a membership and it's open 24, like 24 seven. And so it has like, it needs to always be set up for those members. Whereas this, the, the, the Gwyn Center is like a community center where the rooms are used for like single use, right? It's not like there's continuous use, if that makes sense. So unless that changes dramatically, it shouldn't be as, as volatile as we're experiencing now. Yeah. I love the concept that the children's church will be in the same building yeah. down the hall. Amen. What a novel idea. Kids in the same building? What? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Any other questions? Remember, next week is the last week of 930, and then no service, and then we're at the Gwyn Center. Any other questions, thoughts? I like it being later. <laughs> yeah, OK. I know. We had, we had mixed, re mixed reactions to later, earlier, but I hope that we can get excited about a later morning. Sleep in, spend some time with the family. Go right to lunch after service. Remember, tear down will be 15 minutes. Um, all we're really going to do for that are, are chairs and flags. Uh, cafe is going to take a time out. We're not going to be doing cafe. It's kind of late in the day anyways. We might have a box of donuts, but that's it. We're not doing anything more than that. Um, we're simplifying the setup and tear down because we have to. I want we, everybody I've invited say 930 was too late for them. Sure. Right. <laughs> really? Yeah. So the 11 may, you know, really work for invitees. Yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. I want to ask that we pray, not just for the building, not just for the move, but pray that we as a body can step into the Isaiah 61 mandate that he's calling us to. Yeah, mommy and daddy stepped out, huh? <laughs> We're going to pray into this Isaiah 61 mandate. And I want us to just join our faith with what God is calling us to do at this hour. To see lives awakened, families strengthened, and a missional community. Amen? Can we do that? Let's, let's stand up. Let's just stand. And we're going to pray together. We're going to close in a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This morning, I believe that there may be some who are in need of receiving what was promised in Isaiah 61. So I'm going to prophesy this over this body as we pray over this mandate in Isaiah 61. So if you could close your eyes and just receive this this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, because of your anointing, you are here to heal any broken heart. You are present to proclaim liberty to the captives. Lord, your anointing is here to open up the prison for those who are bound. Your presence is here to comfort those who are mourning. If you are mourning, just receive the comfort of the Lord right now. The oil of joy for those who mourn. Beauty for ashes. Some of you may look over your life and you, say, ash, you see ashes, destruction, but the Lord wants to give you beauty. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Some of us might be feeling heavy today, but the Lord is putting upon you a garment of praise. Receive that by faith. The Lord is calling us to rebuild the old ruins. He is calling us to raise our children to be blessed. He's calling us to step into bridal identity, priestly identity. So Lord, we receive your call this morning to see this region awakened by the anointing of the Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as a body, we come together and we say yes and amen to what you are calling us to do. 
Thank you, God, for a renewed sense of purpose and for your wind in the sails of faith to blow us in the direction that you want to take us. We yield to you. We open up ourselves, Lord God, to be used by you. I thank you, Lord God, for this community, this body, this family, who's stepping into it, Lord. And I pray, God, that they would receive the supernatural transaction of heaven that is promised in Isaiah 61. And that we would be free, full of joy, awakened, alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can we just receive it by faith and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus for your anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for your power. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. And Lord, I pray blessings over everyone in this place. I pray, God, that you would move in their midst this week, that you would touch them, Lord God, that you would use them mightily. And I thank you, Lord, that greater things have yet to come. No eye has seen or ear has heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Thank you, Lord. And we go rejoicing today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen.